Welcome to a discussion on cost volume profit analysis. Cost volume profit analysis is used to project the changes in cost and operating income that occur with changes in sales volume. After viewing this video, you will understand the associated terminology and be able to determine the contribution margin per unit, the contribution margin ratio, the units in sales dollars to break even, units in sales dollars to achieve a profit, the margin of safety, the operating leverage, and project operating income given a, for a given number of units sold. Let's first discuss the primary principles of cost volume profit analysis when it comes to total cost and cost per unit. Variable cost and fixed cost behave differently. When it comes to total cost, total variable costs change and total fixed costs do not change when volume changes. The variable cost per unit does not change regardless of volume. The fixed cost per unit will change when volume changes. Operating profits change at a different rate than sales because fixed costs do not change. Cost volume profit analysis always begins with the sales price and total variable cost on a per unit basis. The per unit amount will not change as volume changes. All variable costs include product cost of direct materials, direct labor, and variable manufacturing overhead, and all variable period cost. As the quantity changes, the per unit stays the same and the total amount will change. The contribution margin per unit is the amount that is added to operating income with one more unit sold. Operating income will decrease when one less unit is sold. The contribution margin ratio is the amount of every sales dollar that is added to operating income when sales increase. Total contribution margin is the amount available to contribute towards covering fixed cost. Fixed costs that do not change when volume changes are subtracted from contribution margin to compute operating income. Fixed costs are not impacted by volume changes given the quantity remains within the relevant range. Total contribution margin and operating income will change when the number of units sold changes. Cost volume profit analysis uses the contribution margin income statement to project operating profits when units sold changes. Let's take a look at an example of a company that sells calculators for $3 each. The variable production costs are $1.20 and $0.60 cents per calculator is required to sell the calculator, regardless of how many units are sold. $1.20 will be added to operating income for each calculator that is sold. $0.40 cents of every sales dollar will be added to operating income when another dollar is sold. Contribution margin is not profits until fixed costs are covered. Total fixed cost of $150,000 will not change when the number of units sold changes. Selling 100,000 calculators does not give enough contribution margin to cover fixed cost. The contribution margin of $1.20 per unit and the ratio of 40% will not change. If sales increase $100, $40 will be added to operating income. If sales decrease by $1,000, operating income will decrease by $400. The per unit amounts will not change. Each unit sold will add $1.20 to profits. Total fixed costs do not change. Fixed costs per unit will change with volume. As such, a per unit fixed cost is never used. The contribution margin per unit and the contribution margin ratio will not change when units sold changes. Contribution margin per unit and the contribution margin ratio are used in the formulas that are used to do cost volume profit analysis. Breakeven means that operating income equals zero. Management is concerned about breakeven because it is the minimum sales that must occur to keep the company from losing money. Breakeven occurs when the total contribution margin is equal to fixed cost. Total contribution margin less total fixed cost will equal zero when the two amounts are the same. 
Break-even in units uses the contribution margin per unit. Break-even in sales dollars uses the contribution margin ratio. Let's continue our example of, cal with, of calculators and determine sales in units and dollars to break even. The contribution margin per unit and the contribution margin ratio will not change when sales change. Total fixed cost will also remain the same when sales change. So the question is, how many units sold will give the $150,000 in contribution margin that is necessary to cover the fixed cost and break even? Dividing the fixed cost by the contribution margin will give the sales required to break even. Divide the contribution margin per unit when computing units to sell to break even. Divide the contribution margin ratio to determine the total sales dollars to break even. Most owners are not satisfied with earning no profit. Once management knows the sales required to break even, the next question is how many sales are required to earn a certain desired profit? The same break even formula is used and the desired profit is added. This will give the sales required to cover fixed cost and have the target profit left over. Margin of safety estimates the amount current sales can decrease for a profitable company before the company is no longer profitable. This formula is also used to estimate how, many, how much sales must increase to become profitable when a company is losing money. The margin of safety percent is the percentage sales must change for the company to lose money. Margin of safety can be computed using sales in units and total sales dollars, either one. The operating leverage formula is used to quickly estimate the percent that operating income will change when sales change. The operating leverage factor is computed as contribution margin divided by operating income. You can remember that contribution margin goes on top by remembering that contribution margin comes before operating income on the income statement. The operating leverage factor is a multiplier and is always an absolute value, a positive number. The operating leverage factor must be multiplied by a percent change in sales. Multiplying by a dollar amount will not work. The operating leverage factor multiplied by a percent change in sales gives a percent change in operating income. The percent change in operating income is often used to compute the expected operating income in dollars. Take a moment to review the formula. Then imagine that you are sitting in a meeting and the sales manager says that sales are expected to increase 20%. The owner looks at you and asks how much the 20% change in sales will increase income. If you know the operating leverage factor is 3, you will be able to quickly tell the owner that income will increase by 60%. Or 3, the operating leverage factor, times the 20% increase in sales. Let's now take a look at an example of a company that makes and sells more than one product. A picture frame manufacturer makes and sells three different sizes of frames. Each size of frame sells for a different amount, has different amounts of variable cost, and therefore has a different contribution margin. The question becomes which product to use to do the cost volume profit analysis. The answer is that using only one product will not provide the information related to the company as a whole. A weighted average that includes all products must be used. The first step is to compute the sales mix. The sales mix is the percentage of the total units sold for each product. The sales mix percentage is computed for the 2 by 3 frame by dividing 1,000 units sold by the 10,000 total units sold to get 10%. The process is repeated for the other two frames. The second step is to compute the contribution margin for each product. The sales mix is used to compute the weighted average contribution margin. The sales mix is multiplied by the contribution margin for each product to get the portion to include in the weighted average. The portion included in the weighted average for each product is added together to get a total company weighted average contribution margin. 
The weighted average contribution margin is $3.20 for the company. As long as 10% of total frames are sold are 2 by 3 frames, 60% of total frames sold are 3 by 5 frames, and 30% of the frames sold are 8 by 10 frames. A change in the sales mix will also change the company weighted average contribution margin. Cost volume profit analysis is done using the weighted average contribution margin, assuming the sales mix will not change. The same process is followed to compute the weighted average sales price that includes all products sold. The sales price for each product is multiplied by the sales mix percent to get the portion of the sales price that is included in the weighted average. The weighted average contribution margin and the weighted average sales price are used to compute a weighted average contribution margin ratio. The weighted average amounts are used in all cost volume profit analysis formulas. After viewing this video, you should be able to do cost volume profit analysis and determine the information used to analyze the operations of the company and make sound business decisions. Please log on to studymyaccounting.com. The practices you learn will give you examples of each of the concepts discussed in this video. Work the practice test to verify your understanding. Write the answers out and check your answers to the answers provided. Please write it out. It will help you really get it. Thank you for being prepared for class. It is very much appreciated.